CataractCoach.com. I want to show you an amazing technique for soft posterior polar cataracts. Our guest surgeon is Nito Rossitelli from Brazil. This is a young patient with a posterior polar cataract. And we're going to start off by putting some dispersive viscoelastic to protect the cornea and give the surgeon a better view. Now we know in these posterior polar cases that that capsule can be frankly absent or fragile or very weak. Here's the keratome being used to make a superior incision. Now the blunt sides of the keratome are being used to hold the eye still while the side port's being made with a diamond. And the eye is still just filled with aqueous at this point. There's no viscoelastic in the eye. So this technique, it looked very easy, but that's actually a very difficult technique to learn. And so certainly this surgeon has tremendous amount of experience. Filling the eye now looks like probably anesthetic, and then here comes a dispersive viscoelastic. We know that we have to be very careful here in these cases because the capsule can break, so we want to avoid hydrodissection. Now here he's using forceps like mine that are marked off at two and a half and five millimeters, and he'll start off by making a capsulorexis. Very important to have this intact round five millimeter capsulorexis because studies have shown that about one third of patients have a risk of poster capsule rupture in these eyes. And if we need to, we need to have a good ability to put in a sulcus lens. So there's the capsulorexis, letting out a little viscoelastic before he starts. And watch carefully, no hydrodissection, only delineation. So he'll go there towards the center of the nucleus and he's gonna go just the delineation wave, that's it. And you see that central piece of the endonucleus has come up and now he's gonna use the phaco probe to aspirate that, chopper in the other hand. And what did I find so amazing about this technique? Well, after he moves this central endonucleus, you'll see how he uses the chopper and I've never seen this before. He uses the chopper to help dissect out the rest of the cataract, the rest of the nucleus, the epinuclear shell. So he'll place the chopper here and go around and try to dissect around and dissect up the rest of the epinuclear shell. This is a very different technique. I thought it was brilliant. I've never seen it before. And we've posted many posterior polar videos here in Cataract Coach. I, in the past, have used a viscodissection technique to separate that epinuclear shell, but he's simply using the chopper and a little bit of vacuum from the phaco probe. And you see, just with that, he's able to completely loosen up all of the rest of the epinuclear shell. No hydrodissection at all. He doesn't even do viscodissection. Jess uses that chopper to create a plane, and he dials up the entire epinuclear shell. Now that was very, very interesting and very successful. Now again, don't let the anterior chamber collapse. So before he comes out with the probe, he fills the eye with more viscoelastic. The reason you don't want to let the anterior chamber collapse is remember that central posterior capsule is very weak. And if you let that capsule flop and come forwards as the AC deflates, you can have a rip in the posterior capsule. So now by manual irrigation aspiration to remove the cortex. And again, epinuclear shell's already been removed with his innovative technique. And going around here to remove the um, cortex. Nice circumferential manner. And note that he's staying away from that central posterior capsule. Taking out a little bit more of it. Now the question is, you're going to have to switch hands, correct? And so to switch hands to access the other part, what should we do? Well, here, the old saying is viscoelastic is much cheaper than vitreous. So the smart move here is to fill the eye again with dispersive viscoelastic while that infusion is in the right hand. Now the infusion candle can be pulled out of the eye and the hands can be switched. Now it'll be the aspirator in the right hand and the infusion going in the left hand. So again, very important, don't let the anterior chamber collapse in a posterior polar case. So now the infusion is going to go in. And there it is. 
and then in the right hand, the aspirator, and the, remiss, the rest of that cortex can be removed. Now, in this case, the posterior polar opacity is completely removed, and it looks great. Capsule is totally clean there in the central posterior part. But if you had a case where there was still some material adherent there in that central posterior capsule, my advice is to leave it alone and do a YAG laser a month or two later. So that looks great. Completely clean capsule bag. Everything's still intact. And of course, this is a younger patient, and to have a great long-term outcome, it's always preferable, especially in a young patient, to have the eye well in the capsule bag. So infusions in the left hand, now coming in the right hand, we're going to get our lens coming in. So it's going to be a lens going to be placed in the capsule bag. There's the injector, counter-traction and infusion being placed with that left hand. And now the lens is totally in the anterior chamber. And what doctor will do here is he'll very carefully tuck those four haptics. Now this is a lens design that we do not have in the USA, so I'm not totally familiar with it. But going inside the eye here, he'll just use that second hand, that right hand, to just tuck in the haptics one by one. And the nice part of this technique is it does not put any pressure or uh, touching of the posterior capsule. Beautiful overlap of the capsular rexus. We can see a nice rexus overlap on top of the optic. So probably a 6 millimeter optic and a 5 millimeter capsular rexus. And now what? Left hand holding the infusion in the eye. The right hand is hydrating and sealing the incisions. Again, important. Do not let the anterior chamber collapse. And at this point, the end of the case, we don't want to instill more viscoelastic in the eye. So just using the left hand with the infusion on constant irrigation, he's able to keep the eye inflated. And again, even at the end here, no deflating of the anterior chamber. So final check here, seal the incisions a little bit more, and this patient's going to have a beautiful outcome. So very interesting technique, something I had never previously thought of, of using just the chopper or second instrument to separate and dial that epinuclear shell out of the capsule bag. It's an advanced technique, and I'm certainly looking forward to trying it soon. If you're a beginning surgeon, I'd maybe first start off with the visco dissection technique that we've seen here on Cataract Coach in previous videos for these posterior polar patients. Thank you guys for watching. I certainly appreciate it. And thank you, Dr. Rosatelli, for the excellent submission.